Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. And what are we going to be talking about today? Well, today we're going to be talking about the Thanksgiving special that has just been announced right now, which will start on the 21st. I'll be talking about some of the stuff that's going to be included in it, and then mostly about a bunch of units that are going to be on the banners on it. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel. And let's get right into it. So, Thanksgiving special 2024. We have these every year, if you don't know, if you mainly play on the JP version of the game. But every year, uh, NA does this, and um, that's how it goes. So, main information for it. Login bonus. Over the five days, it'll be a silver, a single silver apple, a single golden apple. Ten five uh, uh, EXP, three million QP and five sand quartz, those singular apples here to help you get back anything that you lost over the lotto grind. Or maybe actually because this is happening, mm, well, you'll get the, the silver apple, I guess. No, this happens after, I think. Yes, it does, it does. Because uh, it happens on the 21st, and the last day of grinding is Thursday tomorrow. So <laughs> you can start rebuilding. Uh, there'll be login bonus craft essences, which are going to be the blue the the Blu-ray from Fate Last Encore, which is going to be Bouquet of Dazzling Roses. And Fragment of the Moon, which will give you Mystic Code EXP plus 50 and Master EXP plus 50. But the most important thing is that it's just really nice art. That's all that's here. And then there'll be limited time campaigns of a three times great and super success chance. The chances of getting a super and great suck in Servant and Craft Essence Enhancements are tripled. Wait a minute. Did, don't we just have it right now as double? Am, am I crazy? Uh, the, hold up. Give me a second. Am I, am I crazy here? Yeah, I guess fuck you if you decided... <laughs> I guess it's going to hell if you decided to do two times great and super suck during the uh, the story campaign for a brief window. It, it literally the next day, it was like, hey, three times great and super suck. That is so funny. I have never seen... I guess to be fair, you only got this if you cleared Lost Belt 6 prologue intro, and this is for everyone. So you know what? Fair enough, but it is still very funny if you used all your EXP for this. I mean, it's funny to me, not not so much for you. One half AP campaign, uh, one half AP for all Ember gathering and training grounds for daily quests. Additionally, all daily quests will be unlocked for the duration of the campaign. There'll be a new My Room background for the first time. This is an NA exclusive. That's right, Thanksgiving Day background. Did it? We did it, baby. We're that closer, that much closer to an exclusive NA event. It starts here. It all starts with the Thanksgiving Day background with a turkey that says, give thanks. Let's go. Uh, some additional things. There'll be game updates. Well, you'll be able to get to the Memoria of the Lunar Mare, which is if you get it, uh, you can exchange it for uh, five rare mana prisms, but it's free if you clear the Seraph main interlude. There'll be limited time master missions. Uh, clear one main quest arrow, uh, two or three in arc one or arc two. Complete any training grounds quest five times. Complete any ember guest quest for five times. Defeat three servants. Uh, recommended spot is the Fuyuki Unknown Coordinates X4 because I assume this is the quickest way of getting just three servants with the least amount of uh, stamina. Defeat 30 enemies, excluding servants and certain bosses. Defeat five wild beast enemies, which the recommended spot for this one is Orleans and Jura. Put one or more Earth Servants in your party and complete any quest three times, and then complete all Thanksgiving Day special master missions. And that will be for a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 sync quartz. And if you've already completed all main quest arrows, obviously these will automatically be unlocked for you, because there is no more main quest arrows for you to do. And that's it for the actual event info, because now we're going to get knee-deep into the St. Quartz Summoning, which is the Thanksgiving Day uh, banner. Uh, unfortunately, me and my brother were planning to do a video similar to what we did last year, where we tried to guess it, because no one knows what's going to be on these Thanksgiving Day banners. Um, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. It wasn't that I forgot. I thought I had more time, not realizing how quickly Thanksgiving was coming upon us. This one seems a little bit early, but... Not that, I mean, it goes up until after Thanksgiving, so whatever. Whatever, am I right, ladies and gentlemen? So anyway, the raid observants on it are going to be uh, Bride Nero, Skahawk, uh, Tamamono Main Lancer, uh, King Asan, Taira no Kagekiyo, and Bazet. 
I'm not even gonna try and pronounce her. Manan. I mean, if you know the proper way of saying her name, feel free to. Actually, how does she say it? I forgot. Someone did tell me, but you can just listen to them. All right, here it is. She does not say Manan. Oh, okay, no wait. Hajimemashite. Watashi wa Bazetto Furaga Makremitsu. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
Increases one ally's attack for three turns. Increases their critical star generation rate for three turns. 40% to attack, 50% to star rate, and a cooldown of six. Her third skill is Love to the People EX. Recovers one ally's HP. Increases their defense for three turns. Increases their damage against enemies with the sky attribute for three turns. 3,000 heal, 20% to defense, 30% to sky damage, and cooldown is of five. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C and Writing B. Um, her third skill is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude because she was sure it tried to be assassinated a lot of times. I mean, it worked at the end. Her noble phantasm is the Fox Callistus, the closing roar that fame stars after her noble phantasm strengthening during her interlude. Rank B++, it's anti-unit, it hits two times, it deals damage to a single enemy. At MP level 1, it's 1,200. If you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,800. An overcharge effect is inflicting burn for 5 turns to them, reducing their defense for 5 turns, reducing their critical attack chance for 5 turns. Uh, the burn damage, 1,000. Defense lowering is 20%, and the crit chance lowering is 20%. And then if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 2,040% and 40%. And that's Bride Nero. I love Bride Nero. She is a fantastic single-target servant that I think can also double as a very... Uh, it's not a cheap. Let me be careful with my words here. She's not cheap because she is a five star, <laughs> but she can come in pretty handy if you some if you're someone who is looking for specifically some NP gain in your NP generation because she can be used as a support servant to give them a whole whopping forty five percent, and then also give them some attack. And if you're going against a star ally, you can also give them a bonus damage of thirty percent, which is all very nice. But obviously these. Uh, buffs work fantastic on her. It makes her a solid single target saber. Whenever I need a single target saber, she's my go-to. It's not just because she's MP3. <laughs> it was she was my go-to since she was MP1, and I think I got her very quickly afterwards to MP2 and then MP3. She has always been very reliable to me. I like her a whole bunch. I like her kit. I like how it's uh, support focused, but you can also double it up all on her, and it's very good. Even though this uh, Noble Phantasm does not hit for very much, it's still possible to get a lot of NP gain from the follow-up attacks because she deals just so much damage that she will tear into them. The only thing I'll say is that in terms of some stuff that you would think of in terms of a unit... Uh, the thing that's kind of a bummer is that you'll see that the reduction of the defense does not apply first, because if it did, it would say so right here. Um, so that means that you do not get the benefit of the reduction of the 20% defense until after the Noble Phantasm is launched. Maybe at some point they will give her another buff to the MP. Hey, hey it's not out of the possibilities. <laughs> There's units already with three strength things onto a Noble Phantasm. But that's not to say for me to say that I think she needs it. I think she's already a very good unit with a very solid kit that can be... Uh, defensive focused, it can be offensive focused, it can be used in multiple kind of ways, and I really like using her. In terms of, um, there's probably other single target servants that can definitely, in terms of sabers, that can out damage her. I'm not going to deny that. I'll just say that in terms of what her kit brings to any given fight, I have always enjoyed using her, and I've always relied on her, and I've never really had an issue. Um... I, even in the videos where uh, we use her for a challenge quest and she fails, it's because me and my brother were fucking around and, I don't know, somehow uh, Mandy Cardio is, like, our main DPS in some kind of way. Like, <laughs> she can't save an unwinnable situation, but she still is very good. So that's Nero Bryden. Uh, if you go, I, I assume a lot of people will go for her just because, I mean, it's Nero. Uh, my brother also brought this up. It would have been very nice because we didn't, I think this is our, our, it's good this is going to be replacing a banner that we are getting later or we were supposed to get later um which i think this basically confirms that that banner is dead if i go into december um yes this banner right here which featured bride and nero claudius you can see here that the four star nero is not featured i think it's kind of a bummer Hopefully, maybe there's another banner in December, and they can put her on it, because I think this is kind, it's kind of sucky, because um, if she was a regular four-star, I wouldn't be, like, super crazy. I wouldn't be not super crazy. I wouldn't be so against it, but the fact that she's story-locked, which means that she's basically limited, it's a real pain in the ass, especially if you're a fan of Nero and you want to get her to MP5 to get the best use out of her. 
it's a big pain trying to get this unit um, to MP5 and to get also additional servant coins if you want to open up more stuff that they do. And also in general, this unit has like three different costume dresses and they're all sick. <laughs> so it's a bummer. Um, uh, my brother said it would be nice if they started featuring four stars on this Thanksgiving Day banner going forward. Uh, which would be a good way to pick up on a lot of the four stars that are borderline impossible to get nowadays. So, you know, I think it'd be nice. You can leave your comment down below if you think that that should be something. I think I've seen a couple other people mention that as well. But anyway, I digress. Let's move on to the next unit. Scott the Hawk. Scott Hawk. She is a Lancer. She is two quicks. She has one arts, two buster, two hits on quick, three hits on arts, six hits on buster, and seven on extra. Her first skill is the Wisdom of Dunskalik. 80% chance to increase on critical crit damage for three turns. 80% chance to, grant, uh, to increase on critical star absorption for three turns, then grant self your uh, evasion for a single turn. 50% to crit damage and 500% to absorption on a cooldown of five. Her second skill after the strengthening is the Primeval Rune, which is an increase to one ally's quick performance for a single turn, increase their received buff success rate for three turns, and then charges their MP gauge by 20%, 50% on quick, 20% uh, on received buff success rate, and a cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Godslayer EX, which she gets after her strengthening. I believe that we actually don't have this one in NA yet, if I remember right. Um... No, we do. We totally do. Okay, good. I mean, that makes sense. I've been using it. Godslayer EX! Increases on damage against divinity enemies for three turns. Increases on damage against undead enemies for three turns. Grants self a buff on attack buff for three times. Three turns. Charges on MP gauge by 20% when attacking. The damage versus divinity is 100%. The damage versus the undead is 100%. And this is on a cooldown of five. Uh, um... It used to be only a single turn, and now it's for three turns. Yes, that's very good. Her single passive skill is Magic Resistance A. Her append skill for the third one is Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude, which is a literal, like, this isn't even against herself. This is more against because she wants to go against Gukalan. Um It's not a case of this. This is a case of I really don't like the kid I taught how to fight. Her Noble Phantasm is Gay Bulge, alternative. Um, the Soaring Spear of Piercing Death, anti-unit, B+, hits one time, 500% chance to stun one enemy for a single turn, activates first, deals damage to them, uh, damage is 1,600 at MP level 1, if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 2,400. Her chance, she has a chance to insta-kill him, I have never had this pop up a single time, by the way, and I've been using her since she released. At charge level 1, it's 60%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's a 100% chance, but good luck with that. And of course, she has a costume where it's Bunny Skahawk. Um, I mean, I don't really need... I think it doesn't really matter. I think plenty of people have already decided if they want her or not. But I can tell you right now, for various reasons, who knows how the brains of a person works, what could possibly make them want this... Uh, Celtic woman who could who could ever truly understand the the ideas of a man but I can tell you that similar to Brian Nero this is a unit that I have used since she released um originally when I got her I pulled her and then my sister assumed that this is actually just a funny diatribe story my sister wanted to play for go and she and my brother had been re-rolling trying to get uh skahawk and if you don't know the re-roll process in for go back then it was literally delete all the data and try again and on my main account which is the main account i did i don't re-roll i go this is the account i'm going with forever i'll live with it and on my account i was able to pull her and i showed my sister and then she immediately said is for me and i said uh and then I ended up buying my sister an account with Skahawk because I knew for a fact she was not going to continue the game. And I was already very dedicated to this account that had Altera and I think Waver on it already. And I was like, nah. <laughs> uh, I'll, you know what? Let me just buy you an account with her on it, okay? And she was like, oh my god, thank you so much. And uh, eventually she stopped playing. And I still have that account to this day. Story time over. But anyway, in, in terms of the unit, she's extremely good. 
she has her second skill is extremely nice because this fixes a, one of my biggest issues I ever had with her, which is the fact that this 80% chance fails 20% of the time. And a lot of the times when this thing fails, you're so out of, you're so fucked up <laughs> because you really needed that 50% crit damage. And sometimes you'll lose the crit damage but get the star absorption and you'll go, oh man, thanks. This is exactly what I wanted. So this really helps, but not only does it help out, it also can be used. Don't, not saying that it can be, it should be used this way because it really shouldn't. It can be used as a support as well. If you ever are in a situation where you're like, you know what? Um, this unit over here needs to shoot their MP and they only need 20%, just give it to them and it's a waste for an attack increase, but I would prefer to get that. It is very nice. And then also the fact that this uh, received buff success rate means that she will always have 100% when she uses her first skill is extremely nice. Her third skill is also fantastic, um, especially in the most recent node that we're doing for the Lotto right now. Uh, there's a lot of enemies that have divinity, and in general, it's good to be anti-divine, because that means you can, uh, fuck up a lot of dudes who are berserker divines, <laughs> like our boy Kentoki is, and what he's learning as he's going through the entire process that he's going through right now, of being grinded into the dust for lotto, for lotto tickets. Um... So I think she's good. I think that for the only negative I would ever say about her is this is a chance to instant kill very rarely ever comes up for me. I have never had this come up, but it's okay because this 500% chance to stun has saved my ass so many times that I don't even care that this never procced a single time. I would actually have to go back and think maybe in the history of the game that I've been playing, it's maybe hit twice. And I've never really noticed it. It was always like, oh, I guess they're dead. But I'm already, it's a single target NP. She's already going for the kill. And most bosses have instant kill ignoring. So it's like, it never comes up. <laughs> but I think she's really well built. I really like her in terms of her actual, I think she's also just fucking rad. That's why I'm saying like, there's not much I have to say to convince you about her. Because you can take one look at her design and go, I want this. This is fucking sick. <laughs> I just want him for that reason. She shoots double gay bulge at dudes. Oh, God. I mean, this noble phantasm itself. If I'm allowed to just talk about one of my faves here. Oh, it's so good. And she does hold the whole close-up face. Yeah! Shoots it. Great stuff. How did she used to? Is this the... That's her with the costume. Version 1. This is how it used to look like. This is me back in the day using her. Yeah, look at that. Early day for good times. <laughs> oh god, that animation is not the greatest. I'm gonna go click off of that. So that's Kahawk. Best of luck to you if you're going for her. I don't blame you for going for her. I love her. I think similar to Nero, I think she's either NP3 or NP4, and she's been Bonden for me for, for years now. But I still bring her out every once in a while, because whenever there's a node where I'm like, a Lancer would be very good here, like there's a very annoying Archer boss, I'm just like, um, I need my girl again. I'm getting my ass beat. Please come and save me again. And she does, every single time. Next unit, which will be featured next, will be Kagekiyo. Kagekiyo, she is an Avenger. Kagekiyo, two quicks, one, two arts, one buster, four hits on quick, two hits on arts, two hits on buster, five hits on extra. Her active skills are Genji, accept your demise, A++, increase zone damage against Genji enemies for three turns, increase zone crit damage for three turns, charge his own MP gauge, and then reduces party's critical star absorption by 100% except for self for three turns, 200% to the Genji enemies, Crit damage up is 100% and her NP increase is 30% on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Kagekiyo Never Dies EX. Grants self a gut status for one time three turns. Revives with 3000 HP. Stackable with other guts. Increases on instant kill resistance for three turns. It grants self on the guts activation buff for three turns. Grants self the Thirst of Vengeance buff for 10 turns when gut status is activated. Thirst for Vengeance enables extra damage against uh, extra damage from Kagekiyo's NP. The death resistance increase is 100%, and this is on a cooldown of 4. Her third skill is the Mist of Azumaru. It grants self evasion for 2 attacks, 3 turns. Increases on attack for 3 turns. Inflicts curse with 500 damage for 3 turns to all enemies. The attack increase is 30%, and the cooldown is 6. Her passive skills are Avenger EX, Oblivion Corre uh, Correction C, and Self Replenishment Magic D. Her third skill is an Anti Rider Attack Damage Aptitude, which is. Uh, fitting because trust no one not even yourself 
And her rank B plus Noble Phantasm is the Shogun Yomujo. That's not how you say that. Uh, Yoshi Haisui. All things must pass. To flourish is to fall. Anti-unit secret technique. Rank B plus hits 10 times. Removes one enemy's buff. <laughs> removes one enemy's buffs. This activates first. And then deals damage to them. Deals 100 plus 25% and extra damage to them. Where its own Thirst of Vengeance stack. Max 4 stacks. The damage at level 1 is 1,200, and if we get her into MP level 5, it's 2,000. She inflicts curse for 5 turns of them, which is 1,000 at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 5,000, and that is Kagekyo. Kagekyo is a, uh, is a good unit, for sure. Uh, best suited to um, be a last stand type of unit, the reason being is uh, she's really good at, like, cockroach surviving. <laughs> The fact that this Guts is on a four turn cooldown and her specific evade is two attacks for three turns and it's on a cooldown of six means that it's very likely that you will be able to get this back and be able to be saved by Guts in a decent time. If you were, for example, using the Guts CE from the most recent event and then put this on top of it, you would also stack with your Guts and if that Guts activated again, I believe you would get another Thirst for Vengeance because it grants it based off of Guts activation buff. Of course, this only lasts for three turns, so in that three-turn span, make sure to activate as many guts as you can. Um, and she's also really good if you're going against a specific Genji enemy. I don't think we have anyone that applies Genji yet, but there are enough Genji dudes. Like, obviously, um, Kintoki, most recent, but there's plenty of them over the, over the years. You can use them against them, and you can deal extra damage against them. So she ends up being very good. The only thing that I will ever say as a negative towards her is that you have to be very high investment. Um, you have to make sure that your strategy kind of revolves around her. Uh, just because it is a five star, so it's not like Ku where you can put Ku in the back and be like, hey, if things go bad, Ku will save me. Because she's a five star, it's a pretty high cost, so it kind of makes sense to kind of put her up there, I guess. Um, I'm also not the greatest when it comes to actually using Kagekyo, um, until most recently, until I was proven wrong, until she proved me wrong, I thought she was actually kind of bad, but actually after using her the correct way with the way that you kind of want to use her, and after talking to a lot of people saying like, let me tell you, give her another chance, here's a specific team build I was thinking, I ended up going like, okay, no, the, the, the unit is definitely much better than my first tries for them. So if you're someone who's looking for maybe playing with a little bit less low investment to begin with, it's not really one of those units. It's really one of those units where you have to pretty heavily invest in them and then really think about the team when you're making it as well to get the most damage out of her and be able to hit as hard as you can. Um, and that's Kangekyo. Best of luck if you end up going for her. Let's see, who's next? Next is King Asan. What's next is another, another delicious sip of this water. <sighs> Alright. Hmm. King Asan. Or the first Asan, depending on how you want to call him. Bless you, boy. He is an assassin. He's the old man of the mountain. <clears throat> he is King Asan. He has one quick, one arts, and three busters because he is all about that gorilla lifestyles. Five hits on the quick, three hits on the arts, one hit on the buster, and six hit on extra. His first skill is the Abyss of Death EX, which is this is after the strengthening, which I believe has entered the game already. Actually, don't know yet. March 2022. Yeah, he has it already. I don't unfortunately don't have King Asan, so I can't actually tell on this one. Grant self gut status for one time, five turns. Grant self the Abyss of Death buff for five turns. Abyss of Death if gut status is present, <clears throat> is present, increase own buster performance for five turns. Grant self an on guts activated buff for one time, five turns. When guts activated, when gut status is activated, 500% chance to remove own Abyss of Death buffs. Charges own MP gauge by 20%. Increases own buster performance by 50% for a single turn, and then revives with 5,000 HP and the buster increase is 30%. And this is on a cooldown of 7. Um, second seal, Protection of Faith, A++. Increase own death resistance for 3 turns. It recovers own HP. Increases own defense for 1 turn. And then increases own attack for 3 turns. The debuff resistance is 100%. The heal is 2,500. The defense up is 40%. And the attack up is 20%. <clears throat> Third skill, the Evening Bell, Return to Dust, EX, which is after a strengthening. Let me see when this one comes in. 
Okay, this one's coming up soon. We don't have it yet. So this is the version of the skill that we have. The Evening Bell EX reduces all enemies' instant kill resistance for three turns. Increases on Buster performance for one turn. 50% the death resistance and the Buster increases 50% on a cooldown of six. His Evening Bell Return to Dust, the difference that they made is that it reduces all enemies' instant kill resistance for three turns. Increases the Buster performance for three turns and then charges on MP gauge. 200% death resistance, so they even increased the volume of it. 50% um, up to Buster still, and 30% to uh, NP. And this is still on a cooldown of 6. His passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Present Concealment A, Independent Action B, and At the Boundary A, which is a Grant Self Instant Kill Immunity, increases his own Charm Debuff Resistance by 100%, and Grant Self Debuff on Attack Buff, a 5% chance to activate Instant Kill Enemies by 100% Death Chance when at Normal Attacking, and I forgot to mention this with Kagekiyo, but I'll mention it here because he also has it. This sometimes comes in extremely handy in some challenge quest where you're dealing with someone with Instant Kill, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so like, for example, the King of Son fight from way back in the day. Anyone that can make it so that they're, they can't be instant kill and can't be randomly killed off is extremely useful for when you need it. Um, most of the time, many enemies don't have instant kill immunity. But if they have it, I only see it as a positive and not really a negative. You can't really see it as a negative. Uh, third skill, Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude. Increase on attack against Saber enemies. And his Noble Phantasm is Azrael. The angel that announces death, rank C, can't believe with that name this is rank C, anti-unit hits a single time uh, per hit percentage 100%, deals damage to one enemy, 600% in MP level 1, 1000 in MP level 5, and then he has a chance to instant kill them at a, at a charge level 1, it is 100%, and if you get them to the final charge level, it's 200%, and that is King Asan. King Asan is fucking sick do you like badass skeleton men then you should get king asan do you like buster gorillas you should probably get king asan there's <laughs> the worst you could probably say about king asan is that he's old i guess but they've been buffing him up a little bit here over time so i think eventually they'll get to the point where maybe the second skill will be buffed even though i think increasing your debuff resistance for uh, by 100 percent for three turns is insanely good it doesn't mean that he can't be bucked for later on, but, um, yeah, I think he's still very good as a single target assassin, and one that's also 100% buster focused, so if you're all about literally busting, <laughs> are you, are you down with busting dudes, then King Asan is your dude. Um, I love King Asan. I don't, I had him in JP back when I played JP way long, long ass time ago, um, and I haven't been able to get him since, which is a shame because I love King Asan. I loved his debut. I love his look. I love his design. I love his noble phantasm. Like, like one of the coolest dudes to ever be featured in Fago. One of the, the hardest designs Fago's ever had. When he showed up in that music video and he fucking comes towards you with like a rocket. One of the, uh, uh, most people were tearing up saying, this is beautiful. I didn't tear up till I saw that man rocket towards me. That's how much I said, this is real, brother. This is <laughs> this is everything I've ever wanted in a game. <laughs> King Asan. Um, he ends up being probably, if you don't need a, a single target assassin, then I would say probably it's a good idea not to summon for him. Uh, Lucifer, don't, don't cry at me. Don't. He's crying at me because he doesn't like it when I talk about his favorite units and I tell him that th there's a reason to not summon for him. But there is. And the reason is, is that you don't need a single target assassin. If that's the case, then, because you're someone who's like, whatever, I use berserkers for everything, then I guess, okay, fine. I guess you don't need a single target assassin. But I still think he's really cool and he's really good. Uh, that's King Asan. And now, we'll go on to the next unit. There's only two left. Tamamo! Tamamo, no, my Lancer, aka Summer Tamamo. Or Tamamo Shark, depending on how you want to call her. She's a Lancer. Two quicks, one arts, two buster. Four hits on quick, two hits on arts, three hits on buster, four hits on quick. Uh, no, four hits on extra. Uh, her first skill is... Oh, I forgot to mention. I guess another kind of negative for kicking on is that I think he might run into... I never ran into problems with NB gain with him. But he is, like, someone who is using, like, straight up three... Um, 
three busters. And I think he does get a lot of MP gain from the quick and the arts, but it is something to kind of keep in mind, I guess. Uh, Tomomo no me. I mean, it's fine. Just kill everything in one hit and you'll be fine. And I guess a Vich helps a little bit with that, but you know, I digress. Someone will find a way to get angry at me. Don't worry about it. Tomomo no mai. First skill is Beach Flower EX. Increases party's attack for three turns. Increases critical star generation rate for male allies for three turns. 20% to attack. 42% to male star rate on a cooldown of five. How do you know that this unit released during the early years of Fago? 42% chance. It's the ultimate sign. Second skill, Midsummer Witchcraft A. Charms one enemy for one turn. Reduces their defense for three turns. Inflicts curse for five turns to them. And then charges their NP by one demerit. 30% to defense, curse damage up 100% on a cooldown of 7. Her third skill is uh, Goddess Metamorphosis, which is after a strengthening, which I believe has happened already, just to check though. Yes, it has already happened by this point. Goddess Metamorphosis, Sky A, grants self-invincibility for one turn, increase zone crit damage for three turns, uh, star generation rate for three turns, increase zone MP generation rate, uh, debuff resistance, and healing for one turn. And then charges on MP gauge, 50% up to crit damage, 50% to star rate, 50% to NP rate, 50% to debuff resistance, 50% to heal rate, and 30% for NP increase on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Riding A, Territory Creation A, and Divinity A++. Her third skill is an anti-berserker attack damage aptitude, because she's really out for her cat on that one. In her Noble Phantasm is Rank C, the Tokonatsu Niko Hayuke Gasso Shoi Ishin, the Everlasting Summer Sunlight, Sunshade, Sunshade, Power Cell of Master's Most Favorite Deity. Rank C, Anti-Unit, hits four times, uh, deals damage to one enemy, it's Buster, 600% at MP level 1, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,000. And then she deals uh, extra damage to male enemies, which is 150% to 200% at MP, at, not at MP level 5, at charge level 5. And that is Summer Tamamo. Um, the worst thing I could say probably about Summer Tamamo is that she's just kind of old. Like, obviously this skill doesn't pass the mustard in modern sense. Like, <laughs> a 20% to attack up, and then if you're a male, get some crit star generation rate? Not the greatest. Uh, this second skill, which is, I've always thought this was very funny, it didn't matter back then, just because, oh, well, in theory, you just use it when they're about to use their Noble Phantasm, or they'll be dead soon, so who cares? But the fact that you can charm an enemy 100% is nice, but the fact that it also gives them an MB gauge is so unbelievably bad. <laughs> But it's okay, as long as you use it when they're already about to get their NP, then try to treat it like a weird stun, I guess. And this third skill is nice after the buff, because um, I believe if I remember right, it used to stun her, and they removed that shit, so that makes her uh, much better for it. And this Noble Phantasm is anti-male, so if you're ever going against an Archer male, she'll be able to completely shred them using this NP, so that's very nice. But yeah, that's basically Tomomo. The, the worst that I can say about her is that she's just kind of old. So, But if you're a fan of Tomomo, it's Tomomo Summer. You're going to get her for the design alone. So there's not there's not that much I can say about a Summer unit. Because like, <laughs> for the most part, a lot of people summon for Summer units for this reason. Like, I like to look at them. And then second, what do they actually do? So I think in my opinion, I think she's pretty good. It's just that she's not in the upper echelons of stuff because I still think she has a little bit of jank in her kit, but that can all be ironed out with buffs eventually. Like, I think they will get there eventually. Um, they just need a little bit more time, like on this first skill. But she should still be able to deal a lot of damage just because this 150% against males will be able to destroy a male completely. She kicks them in the nuts and stuff, so um, you still got that going for you. So there you go. That makes her at least still usable, so I still put that under good. Um, and like I said, she does look really nice in all these arts. Big ass hat. Fantastic hat. Beautiful bow. Great stuff. Some kind of weird coat. Is that a coat? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a little like... Wait a minute, what the fuck? Where is this? Oh, because that's because it's a sprite too, smartass. <laughs> there you go, I am... Moving on <laughs> to the next one. 
<laughs> Bazette, we're at the final lap here. Uh, let's talk about Bazette. She's an alter ego. Um, she has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Six hits on quick, three hits on arts, two hits on buster, five hits on extra. And her active skills are Sealing, Designation, Enforcer A. Um, increases on quick performance, buster performance, and crit damage for three turns, along with dealing extra damage, increasing own damage against caster enemies for three turns. 30%, 30%, 30%, and 30% across the board on a cooldown of six. Her third, her second skill is the Sea God's Ruin EX. Rune charges own MP gauge, increases own critical star absorption for a single turn, and then increases uh, critical damage for one turn. 50% to NP, 500% to Absorption, and to Crit Damage up 100% on a cooldown of 6. And her third skill is a Secession of the Red Branch B, grants self evasion for a single turn, grants self debuff immunity for one turn, and gain some Crit Stars on the uh, 20 Crit Stars on a cooldown of 5. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing A, Divinity B, God's Holder, the traditional carrier EX, which is an increase to own Crit Damage for 5%. And then extends offensive buff expiration timing on self for the end of the player turn to the end of the enemy turn. This will make sense for Kit pretty soon. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind. Uh, she has an anti-Avenger attack damage aptitude because fuck Anker Mon you. And her noble phantasm is the Fragorak. That is not how you say it. It's the Fragorak? Fra Fragorak? Alright. Gouging Sword of the War God. Uh, rank EX, it's a counter, it, uh, it's quick, it, grant, it draws attention to all enemies by 500% for a single turn, grants self the <laughs> counter, which status for a single turn, the <laughs> counter will have one hit 100%, quick type noble phantasm card attacks treated as neither buff nor debuff, deals damage to one enemy when taking attack or becoming the target of active skills by them except some special actions. If the enemy has a break gauge, the counterattack cannot break it and the 1 HP remains, uh, reduces their quick resistance by 10% for 3 turns, gain 10 crit stars. Note, oh god. <clears throat> if a buff block skill is used by the enemy on uh, Bazette and if her noble phantasm is used after when they attack up and the taunt effect on her NP will be blocked by the <laughs> counter, it will be successfully cast in succeeding action if the enemy either uses an AoE attack or an attack aimed at her using an aoe debuff or a debuff aimed at her she will be able to counter these actions um if a buff removal skill is used by the enemy on uh, bazette after her noble phantasm is used both the attack up and the taunt will successfully get removed but the <laughs> counter will not get removed uh, this buff removal is treated as a normal action by the enemy so she'll be able to counter it in succeeding action action if the enemy uses an aoe attack or an attack aimed at her Using an AoE debuff or a debuff aimed at her, she will not be able to counter these attacks. If uh, Bazet is in uh, in an immobility debuff, the <laughs> counter will not be activated. So if she's stunned, charmed, pigified, asleep, or she can't use quick cards, arts cards, buster cards, or attack cards, then she won't be able to move. The counter is also not triggered when her HP is reduced to zero by enemy attack. However, if she is revived by Guts, the counter will be activated. Also, if she is sacrificed by Chen Gong's NP while in Guts status, the counter will not trigger. Angra Mon Yu's Reflect Damage also cannot trigger the counter. <laughs> counter can bypass an enemy using Taunt. The <laughs> counter will be able to retaliate against the attacker regardless of whether the enemy has Taunt. <laughs> counter can be activated if the MP Drain debuff is used by the enemy on party or targeted on Bazette. Um... <sighs> MP level 1, 600% to counter damage, and if you get her to MP level 5, it's 1000. The overcharge effect is an increase to one attack. This activates first, uh, which is very funny. Uh, charge, <laughs> charge level 1, it's 10%, and if you get all the way to the final charge level, that's 30%. So she has a counter, and the reason why so many of these things come up is because if you've never used her, it probably doesn't make any sense. Um, but the way that the counter works is... makes it so that... It's a very cool unit to use, but it takes a little bit of a time to actually get used to it. The funniest thing that I've seen with Bazette is that it's possible to actually farm with her. Because obviously, the second that the enemy goes for an attack, she's going to hit them back. And I believe she gets NP gain back off of that as well. So she can attack them, hit them all, clear them out, and then um, she'll get back her NP for the next turn and you can use it again. 
The problem that can come up, though, is that if it can still fail because if they don't hit you, that's why they have to make so much notes here about like, okay, so what if they use this? Well, as long as they're using an ability that targets her, they will get hit. It doesn't matter if they have a taunt on another unit, if that unit attacked her, doesn't matter if they're being protected by a taunt unit, she will bypass it and go hit them instead. So it ends up being that Bazette is a really cool unit. <laughs> when you actually get to use her and have a whole bunch of stuff to actually mess with her, like her though, the way she works with break gauges, it's actually possible to two turn some bosses with break gauges. Just because if they have like three break gauges, um, you can two turn it. Because what will happen is, is that on your turn, you break the gauge. And then when they go to attack you, she will then hit them into a single HP, which will leave them with one HP. So then on your turn, you could then break their gauge, bring that down. They're at their final gauge level. They attack again, and then they die. So it's possible for you to get hit with that kind of stuff. Um, and it's pretty cool. I wonder if the video here will actually show it off just a little bit, or if they stop it after the attack. Awesome. Hmm. Yeah, they'll show it here. Just so this will help a little bit. So you can see here, she sets up the counter. The attacker. Boom. She hits back. She goes there. So yeah, that's how that can be used right there. Um. So yeah, like I said, she's a very different kind of unit to use. And as such, it's a little bit hard to gauge her like a normal unit. Because as long as you are fulfilling what she needs and you are acting on that, she ends up being a really, really good unit. But if you're not specifically built to use her, then you're going to run into some problems using her. It's one of those kind of units where it's, I guess, similar to Kagekyo, but in a more ex extreme example. If you, have a, if you have some specific use case, just because this is another unit I don't have, um, I would love to have Bazette. But unfortunately, I, just, I, I don't have the time to summon for her now. And I failed her when I went for the first time. But if I was going to summon for him again, it would probably be sometime around Valentine's Day. Um... So if you have any specific experience with not using quick stuff, then you can feel free to tell me. But if you're not using a quick buff of some kind, then obviously she's not going to be able to get the full benefit of what you want. She's not going to be doing the full damage, and she's not going to be doing all the fun, silly stuff. But if you don't care about that, you love Bazette, and you like doing silly units, and you like using units that are just different from all the other ones, like your playstyle, you're like, I've never seen a unit play like this, and I kind of am just interested on that level then go get Bazette. I know a friend of mine who has her, and he loves using her, and he's never had an issue with it, and he also loves Bazette. Maybe that helps a little bit. But the, because she's so different in what she does, he's just like, oh, yeah, whenever I get to use her, she's super cool. <laughs> and I find ways to use her, and I go in it that way. So something to keep in mind. And that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I don't know if I had, I probably had to cut that up to make it look a little bit weird just because I figured I should have put that probably at the beginning of the video before I started talking about all the units. Um, <clears throat> I wish you the best of luck if you're going to be summoning, even though I think for the most part, most people are going to be drained or they're going to be saving. Uh, because a lot of these dudes are fan favorites, it means that the people who are likely to summon aren't the ones who are saving for future meta units. They're the ones who are like, I love Bride Nero. I love Skahawk. I love Tamamo Summer. I love King Asan. I love Kagekyo. I want to get, and I love Bazette. I want to get them. Um, and they showed up out of nowhere, and this is my chance. Like, those are the, those are the type of people that summon on these kind of banners because they don't know what to expect next and those are the ones that would be caught off guards and those are the ones that are going to be wasting stones but it's not a waste if it's going for someone that you like and even though a lot of people will tell you the opposite of that i will at least say the game is more fun when you have units you care about so i wish you the best of luck and i would be doing the same if i was missing if 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 specifically the unit coming up did not relate to my favorite unit in the game. <laughs> if Cuckoo, if my want for Cuckoo was so strong, it was literally the only thing that would ever get me to stop from summoning on her is them announcing a new Summer Quetzalcoatl. That's basically it. That's the only thing that stops me from going for some multis for King Asan or for Brazette, especially because I have like 900 SQ. I could do a couple of them. I just don't want to. Like, the, the best I'll do is probably accidentally throw a single multi at Quetz to see if I can get another copy, and that's basically it. I'm done summoning. For the year. That's it. Just completely done. Um, I'll see after Quetz to see how it is, but I'm pretty sure I'm just done. I'm already in the thousands now. I'm ready for the new year. 
But for the rest of you, best of luck. Feel free to take my luck. I won't need it. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And just like I said at the beginning, if you want to show some support, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It does help me out a whole bunch. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.